Jerry Lane sees this little boy that has a shaved head and this herd of zombies comes vaulting down this walkway and they part around him just like a wave. You could never get stunt people to quite run this way where their balance would go in and out in quite the way that would be frankly manipulated. So we thought it was best that it be a boy on a ramp with 100% computer graphics, animated zombies running around him. The zombies are horrifyingly well made. It's like your worst fears and nightmares giving shape and form. She gets bitten in her hand and Brad suddenly out of, again, it's one of these instinctual moments, cuts off her hand and then does a countdown to see if she turns into a zombie and she doesn't. That's exactly what happens in rabies. You have a bite on your hand, it takes a lot longer for it to creep up your central nervous system, but creep it does. In the movie, it's a lot quicker, contracted, but in the case of rabies, it's exactly the same process which is happening. You're not gonna turn! You gotta move. I'd like to see the mass that we're talking about, because when we're filming it, it's like hundreds of zombies, but with CGI and with everything built together, it's gonna be thousands of them. The shot going over the wall, that was a big old darn deal. A shot like that takes over a year to make because there's so much difficult animation. You might lay down a basic animation climbing up the wall and they're climbing on one another. And then you sprinkle in all these custom characters and you keep doing that until it looks better and better. And we had one live action shot of zombies hitting the wall and trying to climb up on top of one another. And we did clever camera tricks like lean the wall over, in actual fact, roll the camera over so actually the actors could climb up further than they'd normally do. Then on top of that, we put in a few CG zombies also climbing up on the real people. So it's a mix and match deal again to try and enhance this zombie behavior.